Hello, greetings, and welcome. I'm Brian Posey, and in this video, I want to show you some techniques that I commonly use for handling errors in PowerShell. So if you look on the right side of the screen, you can see a really simple script that I've created. The first line says C colon. This simply changes to the C drive if you're not already there. Then we have CD backslash. This drops the command prompt down to the root directory. Then we have CD scripts, so this opens up the scripts folder. And then we have a line that says new item, name temp, item type directory. So what this line does is it creates a new folder called temp. And then the very last line we have is write host, do some other stuff. And this line is just a generic representation of any other instructions that you might would normally execute. The point is that we have a line of code that executes after we create the directory. So let's go ahead and execute this script. I'll go ahead and press enter and we can see that the new folder is created. Now I'm going to run the script again. This time I get an error message because the folder already exists. So let's take a look at what's going on. The first three steps in the script, the C colon CD backslash and CD scripts are silent. Those don't produce any sort of visible output. So we don't have anything showing up in our PowerShell window. Then when we execute the new item commandlet, that's where we get the error. But notice right here, PowerShell went ahead and displayed do some other stuff. So what happened is even though we got an error, this wasn't a fatal error. And PowerShell by default, if it encounters a non-fatal error, it will keep running. So in this particular case, the folder already existed, so it threw an error message, but then it went on running doing exactly what it was supposed to do. So if this were a real world script that was trying to create a folder and then do some other stuff, it would be fine. It would absolutely do what it needs to do. The problem with this is that it's ugly. If you gave this to someone who was unsuspecting and they ran the script and got an error message, they would see all the big red text on the screen and they probably wouldn't know what to do with it. So let's take a look at some ways that we might suppress this error. One of the things that we can do is to add an error action to the new item commandlet. And the way that we do that is by going to the end of this line and simply typing dash error action. and then silently continue. So what this does is to tell PowerShell that if this line causes an error, then just ignore it. Don't even display the error, just go about doing whatever you're doing, so long as it's a non-fatal error. Let me go ahead and save this file, and I'll rerun the script. And you can see this time the error has been suppressed. All we see is do some other stuff. So we still encountered an error. The difference is that PowerShell isn't showing the error. So that's one way that we can handle errors in PowerShell. But the problem is that we don't necessarily know for sure that we're going to encounter a non-fatal error in our script. Sometimes errors can be fatal. And if you suspect that an error might occur that would be fatal and cause a script to stop running, then you don't want to suppress that. A better idea is to use try and catch. So let's take a look at how that works. Okay, so I paused the video for a moment and I added a few lines of code to my script. The first three lines are exactly what we had before. C colon, CD backslash, CD scripts. That part hasn't changed. But you'll notice that we still have the new item commandlet just as we did before. But now that new item commandlet is enclosed in brackets. We have one here and one here. And the reason why we've enclosed this commandlet in brackets is because we're using the try command. What the try command does is it executes whatever command is in brackets to try to see if it produces an error or not. If it does produce an error, then we use the catch command, which you can see right here, to handle the error. So in this case, the catch command is going to execute this line right here, write host, the folder already exists. So rather than displaying a PowerShell style error message, what we're going to get instead is a line of text saying the folder already exists. So let's go ahead and run the script and see what it does. So I'm going to execute the script. And when I run the script, you see that we get a big red error message, just like we did before we did anything. So let's take a look at what's going on here. The error message that we get is new item, an item with the specified name, C colon slash script slash temp already exist. So this is exactly the same error message that we got earlier. And it would appear that try and catch aren't actually doing anything because remember, the catch statement is designed so that if an error does occur, we're supposed to see a line of text saying the folder already exists, and clearly that's not happening. 
So why is that? Well, the reason has to do with something that I talked about earlier. I mentioned that PowerShell's default behavior is that if it encounters a non-fatal error, then it will go ahead and progress the rest of the way through the script. So that's exactly what's happening here. We're encountering an error. That error is non-fatal, so the rest of the script is executing. You can see, do some other stuff. But remember the error action that I talked about earlier. Earlier, when I had the new item commandlet, I suppressed the error, which was a non-fatal error, by typing dash error action, silently continue. So if I were to go ahead and save this and then run the script again, the error goes away, but I don't get that message saying that the folder already exists. So why is that? Well, it has to do with the difference between fatal and non-fatal errors. This is a non-fatal error, which means that try and catch isn't going to work. Try and catch are only designed for situations in which a fatal error occurs. Now, in a situation like this where we're trying to create a folder, but that folder already exists, we're never going to encounter a fatal error. So what can we do if we want to use try and catch? Well, the way that we would fix this problem is by changing the error action. So instead of using silently continue, I'm going to use stop. What stop does is it tells PowerShell to treat this error as though it were a fatal error, even though it's not. So let me go ahead and save this. And let's run the script one more time. This time, I get the error message that is outlined by the catch statement. The folder already exists. So instead of seeing the big red glaring error that PowerShell would normally generate, I see a nice line of formatted text. And then you'll notice that PowerShell does continue on after that, and it displays the line that says do some other stuff. Now, there's one more thing that we might do in a situation like this just to make the script a little bit neater. Maybe what we want to do is instead of just displaying a line that says the folder already exists, maybe what we want to do is to display that as a warning message. That way the text will be highlighted. And the way that we would do that is real easy to do. We would simply change write host to write warning. So I'll backspace over host. I'll type warning. And I'll save my file. And let's go ahead and run the script. And you can see that when I do, we actually have a warning message that's displayed. So we get warning, the folder already exists. So PowerShell generates the word warning. So the text that appears after the warning is the same text that appears in my script right here. And then of course, once that warning message is displayed, then PowerShell goes on and executes the last line of the script, which is write host, do some other stuff. So those are just a few techniques that you can use to suppress errors within PowerShell scripts. I'm Brian Posey. Thanks for watching.